So we know how to um, make electricity. We know how to get it around the country. We know how to work out how much to pay for it. And now we start to get into more practical issues. So this is managing supply and demand. So um, this is the problem for practicalities of power stations, actually working out how you can get the right amount of electricity to the people to supply the demand that we have at any given time. It's difficult to always provide the right amount of electricity um, for power stations, for reasons we'll see. So we're going to look at how you can increase the supply rapidly and we're going to look for how you can spread the demand out. So to try and get a handle on what that means, here's a little graph for you. So what you might be able to work out here is that this graph, there's no Y scale on here, so you've got to think a little bit, but this graph is about the amount of electrical uh, power the country requires at different times during the week. You'll notice there's a pattern over the day. So here we are at the night time, not very much power. We go into the daytime, more power, and then we have this peak. Usually this is around sort of half past seven at night. Everyone goes in the kitchen and puts a kettle on after they've had the tea, and this causes very high spikes. Okay, there are famous times when this happens if England are playing in the World Cup and it's half time and we're losing to Germany. Those sort of times, everybody goes to make a cup of tea and there's a huge, great spike in demand. Okay, then we go to night time again, low. Notice it's a little bit lower here at the weekend than it is during the week. Okay, but there's a kind of regular cycle of pattern. If you did that over a whole year, you'd also notice that there would be higher demand in the winter than in the summer. So that's quite hard for electricity companies. What they really would like is a beautiful flat line here where everybody was using exactly the same amount of electricity all the time and they could just keep the power stations running to provide that amount of electricity. So how do they cope with this? Well, their problem is they can't store the electricity. So there's no way of making electricity and then just sort of saving it up to use at peak demand time. At any given minute of the day, they've got to be producing the right amount of electricity um, that is coming sort of out of the other end of the grid. So the energy they're putting in is the same as the energy that's coming out. And you'll remember talking about startup time, you can't just turn a power station on like flicking a switch. Okay, there are huge machines which take a lot of time to get going. You've got to get more coal or gas burning. That's got to turn the turbines. That's got to drive the generators. That takes quite a long time. If you've got a power station that's not running at all, it might take you days or even weeks by the time you can actually get the power station running. At the National Grid Control Centre, National Balancing Engineer Simon Jeffcoat's on duty. Arrayed on the wall in front of him is his view of Britain from above. The country's been tipped on its side and every high-power electricity connection from the far north of Scotland to Cornwall has been mapped out in loving detail. But Simon is bracing himself for the most difficult moment of his day by watching EastEnders. When the credits start to roll, he's going to have to deal with a massive surge in electrical demand what's known as a TV pickup. We're expecting uh, a pickup of around about uh, three gigawatts, which is 3,000 million watts, or equivalent to one and a half to one and three quarter million kettles coming on. So we expect the demand to pick up over a period of about five minutes. Power surges like this are unique to Britain. No other country in the world switches on so many kettles in so short a time. To cope with the strain, Simon has had to put specialised power stations on standby as far away as Snowdonia and Scotland. These hydroelectric plants can set thousands of tonnes of water plunging down the hillside at a moment's notice generating huge bursts of power in a matter of seconds. But Simon is also having to ask our neighbours across the channel for a favour. To assist us with the end of uh, EastEnders, we have uh, the French uh, link picking up, and they are picking up um, 600 megawatts at 100 megawatts a minute. So that's, again, a very rapid response. So you'll have seen on the video, 
that at high times of demand, at these sudden spikes that we get, particularly in this country where people like to go and put their kettle on, right? we need to suddenly be able to increase the supply. And one way we do that is with pump storage systems. So a pump storage system is a way of storing the energy. You can't store the electricity, but you can store the energy that's being produced during periods of low demand. That's usually in the middle of the night when nobody's really using much electricity. Um, and then you can get that back very quickly during periods of high demand. Okay, if you've ever been up to Snowdonia and you've gone past a place called Electric Mountain, okay, that's an example of the place. The Norwood Power Station is an example of a place where they actually do this to store the energy. Okay, this is really good for the power companies because it means that they don't need to build as many power stations to be able to supply those times of peak demand. So the way they work is like this. Here's our power station. This is night time. So here's the towns. So everyone's having a little sleep. So, okay, your fridge is running and all that kind of stuff. So you need some electricity, but you don't need as much as you need during the evening. But the power station can still run flat out. Okay, some of the electricity is going from the power station to the homes but the spare energy is going to these storage pumps. Okay, what, what are these pumps doing? Well, they're taking water from a lake down here and pumping it into a lake at the top of a mountain. Okay, so by the end of the night time, all the water's up the top here in the top lake. Okay, and then you just leave it there during the day. But then at that crucial time, at the end of EastEnders or whatever it is, right, all these people go into their kitchen, turn their kettle on, so all the electricity from the power station is going to the homes. But what you then do is you then do what you saw in the video. The water runs from the top lake down to the bottom lake, turns this generator and makes extra power. Okay, this might only run for 20 minutes or something, but that's enough to get you through those big spikes that you saw on that graph at the start when the demand suddenly goes up. Okay, so this is a way of us being able to just deal with those big spikes in demand for electricity um, but it doesn't solve the whole problem so the other problem is trying to spread the demand out so you can try to demand reduce the demand over the daytime and one way you can do that is you can think about the kind of appliances which you don't really have to use during the day so things like washing machines and tumble dryers these are things which you can put on overnight but it's a bit of a hassle putting it on a timer so the electricity companies have to encourage people to do that and the way they do that is they sell them something called economy seven electricity it's much cheaper than the normal electricity so you might be paying 10 to 12 pence a unit for your ordinary electricity economy seven you might only be paying three or four pence a unit okay so you put your tumble dryer on a timer switch it switches on at two o'clock in the morning you're better off because it means you don't pay as much for electricity and the power company is much happier because they don't need to build as many power stations because you're getting closer to that nice flat line where the amount of electricity being used is a constant throughout the day.